But to scale the way we needed to, remember in 2020, we grew 39% year over year on a $245 billion revenue run rate. I mean, it's, very, it's unprecedented, it's never happened. Hi everyone, welcome to Clone Compounding, where our mission is to learn from others in order to achieve financial independence. Today, we'll be looking at Amazon and more specifically dig into the details of its capital investment over the last two years. Amazon has invested more than 100 billion in last two years back into its business. During the same time, revenue has grown by roughly 30% CAGR and net income by more than 70% CAGR. For comparison, the amount of capital invested in the last two years is almost double of what they invested in the last 10 plus years. Also, if you compare Amazon to its big tech peers in 2021, Amazon invested more than Microsoft, Google, and Apple combined. That is something. So we asked the question, what is Amazon doing with all this capital and where is it investing it? All right, let's get into it. To begin with, let's hear what Andy Jesse, the CEO of Amazon has to say about it. Take the really big footprint, uh, a fulfillment center footprint, we built the first 25 years of Amazon and doubled it in 24 months. And we, you know, we built a transportation network, which we planned on doing over several years, but because we weren't gonna be able to get enough capacity at the cost structure we needed to serve all the big demand in 20 and 21, we built out that transportation network in just a couple of years. Uh, you know, we um, we doubled, uh, nearly doubled the size of our workforce during that time, and we still didn't have enough people. That definitely sounds impressive. To dig further, if you look into the 2021 annual shareholder letter, Jesse writes that we spent Amazon's first 25 years building a very large fulfillment network and then had to double that in the last 24 months to meet customer demand. He further shares that Amazon's fulfillment capabilities have gone up significantly. For instance, in the early 2000s, it took us on average 18 hours to get an item through our fulfillment centers and on the right truck for shipment. Now it takes us just two hours. He states that while 15 to 20 years ago, we had only four fulfillment centers in US and four internationally, and we did not have any delivery stations, you know, these are these connect the fulfillment and sortation centers to the last mile delivery vans. By the end of 2021, Amazon had 253 fulfillment centers, 110 sortation centers, and 467 delivery stations in so North America. So this is where the capital has been going to. And if you have been enjoying the video so far, smash that like button, that would be greatly appreciated. Let's continue. In the latest earnings call, Amazon CFO shared that out of 61 billion capital investment in 2021, about 40% went to infrastructure, primarily supporting and growing the Amazon web services, but also supporting our sizable consumer business. So this is mainly the data centers, storage, networking capacity, as well as developing new AWS services. One thing to note is that this expense includes Amazon's own cloud needs as well, meaning in a way what Amazon spends on AWS covers both its own cost of running its own business and developing AWS services for other customers. About 30% is for fulfillment capacity, primarily fulfillment center warehouses. So this is the growth in warehouse capacity as well as automation of these warehouses. About 25% is for transportation. So think of that as the middle and last mile capacity related to shipments. This is mainly its logistics network or services. The remaining 5% or so goes to corporate spaces and physical stores. So this massive investment and seeing that Amazon net income and free cash flow were significantly down in quarter one, 2022, we ask a question, was it worth making all this investment? You can see most media outlets bashing Amazon for building this excess capacity because it leads to short-term negative impact on companies' financials. Andy Jassy has said that he is focused on returning back to profitability. 
My own personal view is that this was really a good aggressive move by Amazon. They will very much grow into this excess capacity and they can turn net income positive almost any time they want. And they can continue to focus on better customer experiences without worrying too much about capacity and logistics constraints. All right guys, that's it from me. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe for more such videos.